Education is the future of Haiti. Without an education, the children of Haiti will never have a chance in life. So many children, they walk three hours one way to come here. We just need a miracle financially, really. We don't have enough money for the containers every month that's coming in. We're, we're container poor. Nothing can stop it. And but with the, with me today is Sherry, my wife, and we got Rad here, who's the assistant executive uh, executive director of Love a Child. And also, it's all about most, not all, but most of my board directors are here today. We got Eddie Ostrander right here, and of course Mark Ostrander is behind the camera. Uh, remember, we are here. We got we got David, who's on the board of directors of Love Child for several years, and we got we got here. Brooke, who's not on our board, she's 16 years old, but she's getting ready to go to Old Roberts University, so she was taking her on an interior mission trip. We want to invite you to come and join and be part of our future missionary training center. Starting 2015 in the month of May, come and learn how to drive the mountains like this, how to work for God, and how to be the best missionary ever to carry the gospel to the poor and the needy and bless them. So join the Future Love a Child Missionary Training Center starting, whoa, May 2015. Oh, we have 363 children in this school. Man, and you get your class, you see, we? We, nous get your class, and puis tout nous tap tout profiter le devant vous. Okay. Donc ouais, c'est après la découverte. Est-ce que pendant ce temps, nous pas t'as une toile pour nous couvrir? Mais au coin, il est comme c'est gaspillé. Ma 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 dit Pastor Bobby. She wants to know if we can cover this little class right here with ten. 
because they're putting another school class here. But I told her, I mean, that's up to uh, Pastor Bobby because what's happening right now, the water that's coming down the riverbed is actually taking away the foundation of the church and school here. And we don't know how much longer it's going to last. That's why we built the school down in La Wash. Thank you so much, those of you who sponsor these children. The ones in the little yellow uniforms are sponsored. They have hope. They can go to school. They can have a hot meal every day. But there's so many children outside in rags, barefooted, hungry, that don't have a sponsor. We pray that God will touch your heart. Thank you. Imagine a country where slavery still exists. Now imagine being a six-year-old little boy and becoming one of those slaves to a family. That's the case of a little boy that I met by the name of Jean Edouard. When I first saw Jean Edouard, I couldn't imagine how a tiny little six-year-old boy could be squatting over an open fire with stones and building a fire all by himself. I thought, where was his parents? Where was his mother? Where was his father that would let a little tiny child make a fire all by himself? And then I saw that John Edward was actually cooking a meal. And then I found out that John Edward was the slave child for an entire family here in the country of Haiti. His mother and father had died, and he had no choice but to be sent to a large family member. That family had many children, six or seven children. And so they used Jean Edouard as their slave child. Every day when all the other children went to school, Jean Edouard's days were hopeless. He could not go to school. He would watch as the other boys and girls left in a uniform, and he still sat on the ground in rags. He would watch as other boys and girls had shoes on their feet and books under their arms but he had nothing but a bucket of water to carry and bare feet. His life was entirely hopeless, but yet he couldn't complain to anyone because no one would listen to him. But one day when we came to the village, we asked someone about this little boy who was so tiny, who was always cooking food, carrying sticks, carrying buckets of water, cooking for a whole family, a little tiny six-year-old boy who was acting like a grown man, what was his story? When we found out that he was a slave child and did not go to school, we said, we've got to make a difference in this child's life. We asked one of our partners to sponsor Jean Edouard. I remember the day that we took him out of the village and put him in a truck and took him and cared for him, got him a bath, got him cleaned up, and with his sponsor's love and care, got him a uniform, a book bag, a pair of shoes, and off to school he went. It's the first time he had ever eaten a full plate of food. It's the first time he'd ever had school books. He went to school, he learned how to read and write, and now that little six-year-old boy is the happiest little boy you've ever seen because he has hope. He can now read and write. He has a Christian education. He's learning about the Lord every day. And it's all because of one sponsor who said, yes, I am going to make a difference in the life of one child. There are so many little children here in the country of Haiti where Bobby and I live. Each one of them wants to have a hope and a dream, but they're stuck in a prison of darkness, despair, hunger, and misery. And yes, many of those little children are slave children. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you could be the person who would come by and pick up the phone and your phone call would change that child's life from death unto life. Please be that sponsor today and say, yes, I want to sponsor a child. Thank you. There are almost 7,000 children currently receiving a quality Christian education in Love a Child schools throughout Haiti through the Love a Child Sponsorship Program. Your sponsorship gift not only provides this wonderful Christian education, but school uniforms, clean water, a hot nutritious meal every day, vitamins, vaccinations, and medical care. These precious students are the future of Haiti. No, Voilà les nocelles, nos bacs à pas,
Well, may God bless you. I want to give you a word for the mission field today. This is my favorite, one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. You've heard me quote them, talk about them. But I just want to bring up some thoughts today I have before. Psalms 41, verse 1, 2, and 3. There are seven supernatural promises. God is blessed, has promised to bless the poor. Blessed is he that can serve the poor. Number one, the Lord will deliver him out of time of trouble. Number two, the Lord will preserve him. Number three, and keep him alive. Number four, and he should be blessed upon the earth. Number five, and that will not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. Number six, the Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Number seven, that will make all of his bed in his sickness. You know, I remember when I, in the middle of the earthquake housing, was building the earthquake housing, you and I together, for all the earthquake victims. And I fell and broke my back in three places. They had to put me in the air ambulance, had to carry me upstairs in a stretcher. And, and, but God watched over me, God preserved me. And then they said I'd be six months in rehabilitation, learning how to walk again and get going in life. They had doom and gloom for me. They, had, I, they flew me to a trauma center to the Tampa General Hospital. And they said, I'll be there, rehabilitation for six, six months. Well, within three weeks, I was back in Haiti building earthquake houses. Another time I fell, and we're actually the back, the tractor ran me over, and even my bush hog ran me over the blades going. The air ambulance had to come again, fly me out of here. And it's actually that time I went to the New Orleans Hospital to the trauma center. And, and I was back out of there within three weeks back to Haiti. And the story goes on. When I had cancer, the doctor said, I had melanoma cancer. And I said, just tell me the truth. Because he said it was, I had in my lip nodes, thought it was in my brain. It'd be the MRIs and CAT scans. Now the third, the third, third stage level. He said, Bobby, within, you know, three months, six months, you're gonna be dead. I said, the truth is, he said, you'll be dead. Well, I won't tell you the story, but in the middle of the night, the Lord visited me. God gave me a miracle. God gave me a healing. Let me tell you, I don't give you Baptist, charismatic, Lutheran, Nazarene, Catholic. God made your body. God can heal your body. He's the maker of your body. Have faith today. I'm gonna pray, I'm gonna pray and pray God for you. He can do it for you. He can reverse what the doctors have said. Well, God healed me. They, when it happened, the, the Lord touched me. I went back, had CAT scans, MRIs. They said, well, let's move someplace else. They looked and looked. He said, well, only I got to say, God must be with you. They told me, when you go back to Haiti, stay out of the sun. Well, I'm doing this TV segment right now directly in the sun. And you know what? It's been what? That, that's been back 1993. Is God good or what? Is God's seven promises good? Is God's word good? Read and study Psalms 41, verse 1, 2, and 3. If you bless the poor, God will bless you. Amen. they do without this food that we're supplying them? No, they, they couldn't be here. They couldn't, they couldn't exist. This is the foundation. It's exciting to see that they're getting fed physically and uh, probably the best meal they'll have all day. It will Maybe be the best the meal. only meal they'll it have all day. Probably their only meal. But to see the education that they're getting, matter of fact, some of them are in there right now taking an exam. A test. And they're very serious about it. Education here is very important to, to, you know, but the food works along with that to help develop their minds. Because I, what I've seen, they're so malnutritious when they first start the school that it's hard for their minds to develop. Isn't that right? So now that they come to school, they're being fed. You can see the probably the luster in their hair change and their body change. David and Rad, this school right here, when we first started feeding this school, they all had red hair from malnutrition. They was all skinny. They was all sick. 
They were in very bad condition. And we started this seven years ago. You look at them today in the blue and yellow uniforms. They look good, don't they? This is blue and yellow uniforms. This is a story of success. They're beautiful. And they're not sick. Their hair is cold black. None of them's malnourished. Look, look at them eating. Their skin is beautiful. This is what food would do. Love is something that you do. But now we're ready to go to, we're gonna keep on going to other villages if God gives the food, the money comes to start just like we started here. But so many more is waiting. We don't have the money. My biggest trouble is shipping in our containers that's been donated. I feed my starving children food that's worth 65,000. We only pay 10,000 to get it down here. We actually lost two of our sponsors lately who, who, who kept their word, but their, con, their time was up. They gave $10,000 a month for a container. Well, now we've lost two of them. And so we're really struggling. Um, and we have no other promises for the other containers, just small amounts of money every month. So we're struggling uh, for monies to ship all the food down here, which costs us $10,000 a container, which is actually now 272,000 meals. God bless you and thank you. Bobby and Sherry Burnett need your help immediately to continue feeding starving babies and children in Haiti. These precious children are impoverished. Most have malnutrition, many are abandoned, and all of them go to sleep hungry each night. They are waiting to receive food, and your gift is desperately needed now. Please go to loveachild.com, call the toll-free number, or write to the address on your screen and say, I want to help. He that giveth to the poor shall not lack. In other words, God takes care of those who take care of the poor. On behalf of the starving children in Haiti, thank you and may God richly bless you. My name is Yolette. I have six children. It is not easy for me. I am unable to send them to school. Well, the kids are not comfortable. Paying the school for them is not easy. And the husband is not doing much. Sometimes they call him to do a little job to pull trees so they can make charcoal. Sometimes we carry heavy charcoal on our head. We, and we are unable to sell it in order to buy some cornmeal to cook for the kids. We have dirty laundry and there's no detergent to wash them. It is not easy for us at all. Sometimes he will go fishing for crabs and crawfish so we can boil to feed the kids we add some green pepper in it for the kids can drink the flavored water like soup. 
so they could fall asleep. It's not easy for us at all. The garden sometimes we have no rain. Even if they go to help at the harvest, there is no left over so we can take it home because there's no rain or sometimes if we have a flood, it will take everything that we had worked so hard for. We lost everything. It is not easy. Es que Timonsa es que usa je yonjo le opage anye es que u je Oh yes. I spent 3 days sometimes. I could not feed them. Sometimes I asked the neighbors for salt and boil it with leaves from a tree to feed the children. Es que u pa jam pedi u timon tu timon vi ou bien u te pedi u timon vi. Yes, I lost a child. I went to sell charcoal so I can feed them. By the time I reach home, the child suffered with a headache, was vomiting from hunger. The child died from hunger. No, I have not fed them today. No, I have nothing to feed them in the house. When time is hard and my husband can't find any job and we have nothing to eat, it's not easy. We cannot do anything. Yes, yes, if it was not for heaven holding me and God, I would not be alive with the kids. If you feel hopeful, heaven will direct you. Well, here we are in Old Aton, and this is a very important part of the program. You know, Haiti's in a crisis of food. The main problem in Haiti, 85% unemployment. 85%. And these people are lined up. We give food every month, and this is one of the villages, Old Aton. We give food on a consistent basis at many other villages. And then many villages are waiting that does not have food that's in a crisis for food. Uh, we just got word, uh, we gave out food last week to a school. Children that were so hungry, they were fainting at their desk. But we gave them food, and other villages are waiting. So, that's how you ask, what is our biggest need in Haiti is supplying food to the Haitian people who has no jobs, no money, and the children suffer the most. So these got food lines. Now what this is right here, when we remember, each person got a love a child food card. It's organized, they come each month, they come each month and it, we cross it off and it's got, it's got their name on there and the name of the village right here, the name and the name of the village. And so they cross us, it's organized, one person per family come gets the box of food. This box of food's 216 meals, it will last the family approximately about, about, about a month. You know, after living in Haiti for 23 years and we just see the suffering of the poor, you know, we see moms trying to feed their children and fathers who are struggling. It just really it is the most touching thing that anybody can do is to feed the poor. I mean, it is the very heart of the gospel. And I believe that, I believe it's the thing that touches the heart of God the most. You know, a lot of times we do things, and I think that sometimes, like the book says, there becomes a hole in the gospel when we, do, when we don't do more than preach to people who are hungry. Children who are hungry, mothers who cannot feed their, their children, they can't sit there and listen to a message about the gospel when they're worried about their babies. But we can share God's love by, by giving them food. And now, because of the food distributions and the mobile clinics, Bobby, there's a church here. I mean, there is a wonderful church here. And these people ask us to build the church here. And now the gospel has penetrated this area. And we're giving out food on a constant, constant monthly basis, consistent. Because love is something that you do. Here's how you can help. You're not watching this program by accident. It's ordained by God. You can sponsor for $24, 648 meals of food. For a gift of $120, you can sponsor 3,240 meals. For a gift of $500, you can sponsor 13,500 meals. 
For a gift of $1,000, you can sponsor 27,000 meals. Of course, for a gift of $10,000, we're praying you can sponsor an entire container. We always say 270,000 meals, but it's actually 272,000. That's a lot of people. Please, people are waiting here. We have so many people on the waiting list praying and begging for food, and especially the children, and it shows the love of God. This food's been donated by Feed My Starving Children. It cost them $65,000. They raised the money. But it cost Love a Child only $10,000 to leave Miami in the big tractor trailer or by train, pick up the food in Chicago or Minneapolis, bring it back to Miami by, by rail or by, by truck or container, put it in a boat, go 17 days, go through customs in Haiti, deliver it. Cost us $10,000. Well, for $10,000, we'll receive all those meals of food that's valued at $65,000. That's 270,000 meals. So please call the number that's on your screen. It's toll free. Put it, you make it, I'm gonna get my credit card. To do that, it would speed the process up right now. Or write the mailing address, please write the mailing address. Or you may want to say, I wanna put it on my automatic giving, on the automatic deduction of my credit card. Whatever amount God lives on your heart. A large amount, a small amount, the widow's might, every penny counts for the children here in Haiti. This is where our heart is, is feeding the people, the children of Haiti. Please call now. Thank you, Bobby. You know, I just want to say one thing. We've just heard a story, just a tragic story about a mother who had 13 children who had to sell two of her children as indentured servants, two little girls. She had 13, her husband died, and she was left with two, she was left with 13 children. And so, because she could not feed her children, she sold two of her children, two of her beautiful little girls. No mother should have to worry about selling two children to feed the rest. That's not fair. That is not fair. And you know, Haiti is just an hour and 45 minutes from the shores of Miami. They really are our neighbors. Please let your heart be touched with the cry of the poor today and do whatever God has laid upon your heart. Thank you. Call now, please. The Lord wants to use you. 